Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Dor, the Aloha Shirt Psychic, and I have Arthur in the house. Hey, uh, hey we were going to do this um, Tuesday, but I was feeling a little tired, so we decided to do it tonight instead. So, Aloha uh, Friday. <coughs> Aloha Friday. Hmm. Um, I ran out Hawaiian shirts. I hope this is bright enough. That's great. Um, you can be the bright shirt psychic. How's that? <laughs> well, I'm actually the potty mouth psychic, but that's another story. Yeah, but we don't want to go to YouTube jail today. So. I know, I know, I know. Um, before we came on, you all, um, I got a scam call. Hi, we're hello, we're calling from Spectrum. Okay. <laughs> so Arthur and I were talking about how we deal with scammers who are trying to steal our money. If you all get a call from people that's saying they're from the IRS, IRS doesn't call you, from Medicare, from Social Security, from Homeland Security. You know, or if they're calling, you know, about your cable service, they're scams. Mess with them. Just mess with them. Make up stuff. Keep them on the line. Then they can't scam somebody else. <laughs> well, I told you about the one from AT&T where she called and was very, like, indignant or something. And I said, look, just because you had a fight with your boyfriend last night, don't take it out on me. <laughs> and she was like this silence and like, hello? She says, I had a fight with my boyfriend last night. How, I'm a psychic. How can I help you? Then she says, are we getting back together again? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. You pay me for a reading and I'll be happy to talk with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I've told him like, I'm, I'm going to try that one. Yes, I'm psychic. I see you getting a real job and stop scamming and ripping people off. <laughs> anyway. All right. What's the weather like in Mumbai today? I'm sorry. What's the weather like in Mumbai today? <laughs> I've done that. I've done that. I say, can I ask you a question? What what's the weather like in India? Anyway. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I did my morning moments with Mel. That's hard to say the other day. And it was before Biden's State of the Union. I I, I I'm ashamed to say this. I didn't get to watch it last night because I was um, busy doing other things, but I didn't watch it because I just wanted to see what I said played out. And I guess people were telling me today it kind of did. So I knew it'd be heckled. And I said, um, he will, I said, Marjorie Taylor Greene will heckle him and she'll put him in his place in a, in a nanosecond. I think I said, so tell me what happened. I didn't see it. Well, she was dressed up in a in a Republican cosplay outfit with a little red hat and all, and all this other stuff. And actually, she they carted her away because they said she was alleviated. And she admitted to having a drink beforehand, but she wasn't drunk. No. You know, this is weird that you said that. Because all day long, I've been thinking to myself... Why don't they just escort her out? And after I did that morning morning moments with Mel, I thought they should escort her out. And so I guess they did. That's what I heard. I mean, I didn't see a clip of it, but that's what I'm hearing. But they did take another guy out from, you well, know. Entertainment purposes only. Yes. And when I mean take out, I just mean no, leave I, the room. But doesn't that tell you, I mean, they're going to the State of Union address. I mean, you shouldn't be drinking going to that. So, you know, she has, she, it just tickled me when she called for decorum in the house. And look, she comes to the place sloshed. So, now, now now you know why. of Hunter Biden, and she calls for decorum. <laughs> well, that's why I call her MTG, my tragic girlfriend. <laughs> no, I wouldn't call her my girlfriend. Mm -mm. Mm, tragic, tragic. I wouldn't even call her that. Oh, I just want to say one thing. Mel and I are dear friends, and we talk over each other at times. You don't have to remind us. <laughs> it's because we're in a second psychic. away. It's because we're psychic, and we both have ADD, and that's okay. I do anyway. But you know, when the messages come through, you want to get them out. Mm -hmm. because if you don't get them out you forget them and then you're like i'm gonna say something i forgot what it was um 
It's not, it's not coming from us. It's coming from spirit sometimes. Correct. And uh, I mean, it's been this way with me for years. You don't get it out. That's why I'm sitting here writing little notes mm -hmm. that come through so I can go back to it. But, oh, I thought you were playing Hangman. <laughs> that too. <laughs> um, I used to love that game. <laughs> just, you know, make little, mm -hmm. you know, make the arm increase just by increments, you know, <laughs> by millimeters. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, anyway. I remember I was playing it once and all of a sudden I started drawing a dress on the hang. <laughs> it's a hang woman because I needed more space. <laughs> okay, we've got a lot of questions. So are you ready? Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you showed some you shared some of your questions with me that put people have put on your page. And thank you for doing that thumbnail. That's incredible. I love that aloha background. It's like Gilgan's Island. I know. <laughs> But I just want to mention one thing. Can you believe that Trump actually got the bond for the Indian Carroll? He put up 91 million or something like that. That's a very good point. I don't know who got gave him the bond. I can tell you. Okay. It kind um the defamation lawsuit was guaranteed by the Chubb Corporation, an insurance group. In 2018, Trump appointed Chubb CEO Evan Greenberg to a White House Advisory Committee for Trade Policy and Negotiations. The company is worth more than $40 billion. And what's the name of the company? Chubb Insurance out of New Jersey. Uh, I wonder if that's legal. I well, mean, they, post they posted the bond. They didn't put up all they posted a bond. Yeah, but if he doesn't pay it, then that then mm -hmm. that bond. Yep. Um, because he's oh. appealing. But here's what's going to happen. He's thinking that you know that he'll get another trial on this, but he will not. And the appeals court is going to say there's no grounds for appeal or whatever. And Trump is going to have to pay that money. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they just put it up for bond, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, well. If he defaults, oops, then yeah, and guess what? That's income. <laughs> and I think Evan Greenberg may be looking for a cabinet position. Oh, he is, he is. But I just, you know, I just wonder it's about dicey. My, it's I, dicey. It is, and there tells me some. There's some. Here we go again. It tells me there's some underhanded shenanigans going on for entertainment purposes only, and. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's still not going to get the 400 million he needs for the civil well, case. Well, I think any bank on their right mind wouldn't loan it to him. I mean, obviously, if they do, they can wave that goodbye, right? <laughs> Unless they call him comrade. <laughs> yeah. Comrade Trump. I got it. Um, let me just, I lost, I lost my questions here. <laughs> Um, Sorry, I lost my mind. Why don't you just call it Mel's Musings? That'll get out faster. But you think that would work? Um, you know, I think he's going to have a, a hard time unless Chubb steps in and puts up a bond for the $485 million. But I got a funny feeling they're going to start taking a look into that and seeing if they can, in fact, do that. Because if it's insurance, that's their... That's the the client who has insurance policies or whatever with them. That's their money, and if if and if I would be very upset, you know, if an insurance company used my money to put up a bond for Trump. So I well, think very easily lose business. I have two family members that work for Trump in New Jersey. I can't wait to call them. <laughs> wow, well, I I I see that he's going to have to liquefy assets. Oh, Letitia James is going to get some buildings and, you know. Well, the thing in March, you know, Point. people worry about when things will come to trial, but that Stormy Daniels hush money cover up is clearly going to come to trial in March. And I see him convicted on that. So do I. It's and on the 25th, the day of an eclipse, too. There you go. And I also intuit or see that um, his... The Supreme Court is going to rule that he is not immune from prosecution and that I'm thinking that the insurrection case will come to trial in June or July. 
I'm not, you know, I mean, they're all going to hit boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. My feeling is Eileen Cannon is going to do some overreach again and come up. If she tries to like, well, Trump filed a motion or something. I forget what it was to dismiss the case. I forgot what it was, what it was. Well, there's so many, there's so many things he's been filing, but you know what? What I've been saying is starting at the end of February that Eileen Cannon was doing some stuff. It's going to come out. She's off the case. She's not going to finish this case. I see. Well, I know what it was. He filed for something from immunity because he said the documents belonged to him. No, they didn't. And then he refused to give them back. So they're mixing apples and oranges. It was ludicrous. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she's going to make some stupid decision. <laughs> Go figure. It didn't take a psychic to figure that one out. But my feeling is Smith is going to take it to uh, the Circuit Court of Appeals Federal. Right. And they're going to say we're removing her. That's what mm -hmm. I see coming. No, I, yeah, get the cannon ready. We're going to shoot she, her up. If she tries to dismiss the case, if she says case dismissed, Smith can still appeal, and he will, and he'll win the appeal. Right. So, exactly. Um, and I also see um, the Georgia case coming to trial. I think a lot of them, be, I think most of them before the election. What do you think about Fawny Willis? I see her still in that case. I they keep on throwing everything at the fan and nothing's sticking. And <clears throat> I see she's not going to be dismissed. Well, that's so Donald Trump, you know, he will assassinate people's character and try whatever he can. But I also predict that I forget the guy's Wade or the Wade. Yeah. Right. It's going to come out that his ex-wife, was paid under the table to come out and say that he was seeing Fawny Willis. And who is she? She was having an affair on him. That's why they divorced. Right. With his best friend. And who is Donald Trump to even talk about affairs? How many has he had? <laughs> but they're trying to say that it's trumped up, no pun intended. And yeah. that they're in cahoots to make him look bad. You know, I mean. Well, the thing is, she makes 200000 a year. And they're talking about how much money was spent on that vacation or whatever, the like cruise or whatever. It's thirty five hundred dollars. But it didn't so, come out of it didn't come out of it, state money. It came out of her. No. Home. So I mean, you know, it's like, and then when they asked, "Did you tell your father you're having an affair with this guy?" It's like, you don't ask a woman that. I mean, they're just trying to make her look like you know, they're racist. It's not an affair. Number one. He wasn't married. He was divorced. And number two, she's not married. So how's it an affair? They might be dating each other. Well, you it know, looks, it looks a bit irregular, but they're mixing apples and oranges. Uh, he might recuse himself, but I see uh, if he recuses himself, I see another prosecutor coming on board that's going to be, whoa, like a junkyard dog. They already had, I feel they've already got people lined up. They've got their ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. And you know what? How can they talk about Fawny Willis when they don't say anything? Trump gives a wink and a nod to Clarence Thomas and some of those justices who we know were in somebody's hip pocket. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or on somebody's luxury jet oh. yacht and everything else. Thank you. So there you go. All right. Mm -hmm. ready? We got questions here. <laughs> yes. Drum roll. Two, two. Hello, Auntie Mel and Funny Arthur. Me again. <laughs> okay, Jitterbug. Is America going to be subjected to another Trump-like thug running for the highest office in America ever again? Will there be laws to prohibit anyone with any allegations, investigations, convictions to be run, uh, to be running for office? Thanks again. You two are awesome. Thank you. I think it's going to be a very long, long time before anybody the likes of T. Rump will run for president again. And I think that the parties are going to start vetting their candidates very carefully. I, you know, it, it's kind of hard to pass a law to say that somebody can't run if they've had former convictions. I mean, they're convictions of violence and no. But, you know, once they've served their time in the penitentiaries and this and that, you know, they're, they have equal rights. So it might be discriminatory. But I still think that the political parties are going to vet their candidates quite carefully. And the other thing I see is 
two more political parties coming on the scene. One would be like what the Republicans used to be, and another one that I'm calling like the Progressive Workers Party, that they'll be very progressive. And so I think that the Republican Party, as Kevin Chandler says, is kind of a, it's going to be imploding. <laughs> go ahead. I know you wanted to say something. It's going to go back to the wigs. Um, no, the, what I was going to say is that I actually, I've been feeling that with all the brouhaha going down with the 14th Amendment, Article 3, I feel that con the Supreme Court turned it back to Congress. Well, right. I feel in 2026, Congress is going to take that up and do something about it. That's right. And you know what? It would work, provided we had a functional Congress, but we don't. But well, we will. We will. But what I see, Jitterbug, to, to uh, Arthur is correct, my feeling is that you know Congress will be able to say, okay, if they're in violation of the 14th Amendment, then no, they cannot run for political office. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yay. Well, Biden did make one point last night when he said, if you send me a Congress, I will make sure that Roe v. Way is the law of the land. Who said that? Biden last night on his speech. Oh, he will. He'll get more justices. Yeah, about that. yeah absolutely. Well, I've been I've been saying for some time now that I I feel they're going to add four more. That it'll be thirteen within the next four or five years because there's now thirteen courts that right. they oversee. So before, when they first came up with the nine, there were only nine courts. But I do see legislation being passed to say how many justices can be on the court. I see term limits for the justices being yep. set, and I see a better vetting process for justices. And also, I see legislation being passed that they can't hold it up for a year, like almost a year like uh, the turtle Mitch McConnell did. Right. Uh, I, I think what they'll do is say, okay, that you have to bring it to the Senate floor within three months from the time that the person is nominated. <laughs> I I like that. So do I. I like um, that a lot. But I'm also feeling that if during the vetting process, if they tell the Senate that, oh, no, that's the rule of the land, we're not going to change that, and they go ahead and change it, they get impeached for lying, for perjury. Right, exactly. Yeah, there are three that can do that right now. Um, Mitch McConnell, how about that one? You know, all Trump shouldn't have done that, the insurrection, blah, blah, blah. And then he turns around and endorses them. I mean, I think he bowed to pressure of the party and the tribalism. Um, Especially after he even said nasty things about his wife. I know. I mean, it's like. And she resigned from because she couldn't stand Trump. Remember? Yeah. Uh, in the cabinet. I, I don't get the hypocrisy of it. You know, the um, the double standards. <laughs> you know, triple standards at this point. You got it. Zelina Donna says. Donald is Donald Trump aware he is corrupt or is he just that entitled? Donald Trump doesn't care. He's a sociopath. He's a malignant narcissist. They don't care. To them, the word love, pup, loyalty is like um is like it has um, yeah, it has no no meaning to them. Well, he's no empathy. He's no, he's no feeling. It's like I always said, you need a heart to die. Right. But, you know, he, he is entitled and he is corrupt and he's both and he knows it. And what I meant to say was to care. Care. loyalty and love and caring is like cup, paper. There's just no, there's no moral compass there. And, right. you know, it's the type, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. And if I want it, I can take it. You can't say anything about it. But you have to follow my rules, but I don't have to follow the rules because I'm above the rules. That's Donald right. Trump. So mm -hmm. he just and doesn't. for a rude awakening. He is. But Zelina, I think what makes it more, more horrible is that um, he knew what he was doing was wrong. He just didn't care. Right. Because he had the power. So yeah. there you have it. That's kind of scary to me, but that's how I see it. All right, Pat Lee says, hello, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Uh, you've probably read and heard about the Kellogg CEO stating that people should just eat cereal for dinner. 
We'll let him eat cereal for dinner. Let's see how he likes it. Maybe that was um, a ploy to get people to buy more cereal. Well, that's what it was. Right. <laughs> Many people are calling for Kellogg's boycott. Will it be successful? I'm just amazed the corporate um, aren't trying to hide their greed. I think I think it was just an advertising thing to tell people to buy cereal. <laughs> well, maybe if cereal came, you know how you buy things nowadays and they have that Ziploc, everything is like, even, you can't do that with cereal. Right. So you have to keep on eating it. No, it's just, like, how about it's, telling him to eat dog food? How's that for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> but then again, you know, it's like even Biden brought up last night where you buy a Snickers bar. It's in the same packaging, but the Snickers is not as big as it used to be. I know. I, You know, I've often said my guides have shown me many, many times that this price gouging by these large corporations will, will stop at some point. There'll be legislation for that, too. Mm hmm. So, yeah. um, Sylvia D. Hi there. Well, Alien. Well, Alien. <laughs> Alan. Um, um, Weiselberg survived another visit to prison. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Barely. Well, I think he's trying to get them to strike a deal, but since he lied once before, how credible is he? Well, now that he's admitted to perjury, right? Um. Boy, you know, he and Trump are like that, right? Just like that. But Trump threw him under a bus, didn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trump will throw anybody under a bus if they don't agree with Trump. I would love to get a picture of Trump in front of the um, the poster for bus stop. <laughs> Monroe. I wonder what's going to happen when the Supreme Court says he's not immune. What's he going to say about the justices he put on the court? They're traitors. They're traitors. <laughs> okay. Uh, Northern Mountain Dancer says, do we have foreign agents in our government? The answer, I believe, to that is yes. What do you think? I think it begins with a G, ends with a P, and has an O in the middle. <laughs> Some of them, maybe. Um, uh, I'm not going to name names, but yeah, be careful. Just don't. Reading, <laughs> we're reading each other's minds. That right. Yeah. Um, but but Northern Mountain Dancer also says, and since I believe the answer is yes, good work, Northern Mountain. Will they be taken out of our government eventually? Yes. Well, look at the informant Smirnov. <laughs> he was like. You know, now they have nothing to go on, but Jordan and Comer still, oh no, we have to push forward. For push forward with what? You he was he was their golden child. You have nothing. <laughs> well, Smirnoff is gonna come forward and and say a lot of other stuff, but how do you know he's credible? You know, but he's gonna whistleblow big time. Well, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. And he's gonna tell them about Russian Russian operatives for Putin working here. How much you want to bet? Oh, those, he's going to sing like a canary. Right. And Northern Mountain Dancer, that's how some of them will be exposed. Right. All right. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be great if, there was a, if Clarence Thomas leaves and the whole thing with, with George is done and, and Biden, hey, funny, I think I got a better place for you. <laughs> I love on the Supreme Court or 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 yeah, I need help. What the hell? All right. This is the I long I kind of like went over it. I think I saw this one. Yeah. Saw it? Well, these are from they were posted on your thing. I shall let you read them too. Uh, uh, <clears throat> PGS 777. Glad you're feeling better. Yeah. I had the migraine. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I was feeling pretty bad on Tuesday myself. Now stay better. That's an order because we miss you. <laughs> yes, Auntie Mel. Thank you. No, this was coming from this person who wrote. Oh, <laughs> wasn't me. But thank that, you, BJS. Order too. Okay, it says we love your chemistry with Auntie Mel. Thank you. You two Gemma, G, you little, 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 little. You two gentlemen are stellar psychics. Thank you. That's very, very nice. Question: I ask if you saw people leaving the Western democracies for Russia. And you said no. Okay. Okay. This is on my show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I still, I see no. Yeah. 
you felt it would be too cold for them. <laughs> yes, I do. It's pretty cold. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to clarify. I am talking about far right, dark money funded politicians and their operatives leaving for Russia, a place where they might not like the weather and cannot parlay their verbs, but at least they can be free because they, they'd be investigated, likely already are, eventually tried and likely face significant prison time. In short, when they see Putin's puppet kingpins fall and march off to Leavenworth in fabulous orange jumpsuits to peel potatoes, attend license plate crafting classes, and to deal with big, frisky, nocturnal creatures of the night, do you see the remainder of these foreign place grifters decamping to Russia? I don't. I don't. No, it's like that family from Canada where he took his kids and went to Russia and the farmer, and then we stuck there and he can't come back and he, they froze his assets and, you know, they don't really speak the language. He can't get on a farm and the 10 kids, you know, one out of every 10. So that'll be interesting. And now he wants to come back and they won't let him, right? Mm. Okay. I so guess... I don't see Tucker Carlson, you know, leaving to go back, go to Russia. No, it's, besides that, Putin's not going to be around. Marjorie Taylor Green should go there. Um, they I get that. Want her. I'm sorry. They wouldn't want her. <laughs> yeah, right. It's in her back. I get this. Let's see. I get this feeling that the sentences will only get longer as people people wake up and start demanding better. That is true. I get this feeling rather strongly via my tarot. I, I'm mispronouncing is is it Lenormand? I say it. Lenormand. Okay. It's French. Um, Dreams, pendulums, and the guy who whispers loudly in my right ear. I'd like confirmation, but if you don't, if you still don't see that, it's okay. I do. And it makes me feel vindicated that we all have a politically stable future. Can't say the same about climate change. <laughs> I see we do have a, at some point a politically stable future. My guides tell me that justice will be done. Yay. Now, it'll look like, and I keep saying this, that Trump and his cronies, it'll seem, and even in court, it'll seem like they win some battles. But they will not win the wars. Correct. So. Uh, I always feel that the powers that be give them that false sense of security and then smack them. Exactly. <laughs> Boom. All right. Where'd that come from? I like that. That. It was cool. It had a lot of humor in it. I like that. Yeah, no, it's great. Our well written. Pictures of the night. Okay. Yeah. Bubba. Roxanne M. Is Clarence Thomas coming to the Bohemian Grove meeting this July? Probably. I think so. Uh, he should recuse himself, but <laughs> we both know that ain't going to happen. Um, well, years um, and years ago, um, Oh, what's the guy that was sued about Sandy Hook? Uh, Alex Jones right. had done something about the uh, billionaires all meeting in Bohemian Grove and all this clandestine stuff. And now he's working with them. So it's like, it's crazy. It's like, okay. Is Clarence Thomas meeting with his billionaires to plan? Uh, some, to plan what? A, some more. Like, is he going to plan more stuff to do? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> What about the other males in the court? Is Trump invited? I hear yes to some of them. <laughs> he may be invited, but I don't think Trump is going to show up. No, he won't. To sit in front of a huge statue of an owl? I don't see it. Because it's not his. It's not a picture. Of, it's not Trump's statue. It's an owl. Doesn't have golden tennis shoes, golden sneakers. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Um, you go ahead and read a few. <laughs> I'll show my glasses on. Oh, um, yeah. I'll read them. <laughs> getting it right, 6780. Hope all is well. What do you see specifically around the Democratic Convention in Chicago in August? Yes, there sure. will, yeah. Yeah. I see Mal going, hey, they took the T down. We have now a rump no, tower. I'm, no, I'm not going to go like that. I'm going to go like this. <laughs> like this. Yeah. Okay. With pearls. Oh, um, no. pearls. I want rubies, emeralds, and diamonds. <laughs> get this from Marjorie Taylor Green, but there. Oh please, she she doesn't even know what a emerald ruby or diamond is. Well, doesn't it become a Z? She wears pop beads. Are you kidding uh, me? A, no, 
these are these are these are 100 zirconian they're worth a lot of money don't you know that remember when you were a kid they had those pop beads <laughs> oh my god my mother had them i was a little kid pulled them all over the restaurant one time she mtg were pop beads thank you <laughs> Right. Um, I'm sorry. Be, that's okay. There will be protests, of course, but not like the 1968 convention. I think there'll be some protests, but uh, it's it's not going to be the rioting like happened in 1968. And Mayor Daly, the first Mayor Daly, uh, they were um, rioting in Grant Park, rioting in Grant Park, not rioting, rioting. And he gave the order, like there was a curfew after 10 p.m., I think, mm -hmm. and he gave the order shoot to kill. And no, because he, I mean, it was, it was really bad. I wasn't here in 1968. I was too young, but um, I remember seeing it on TV. here at the time. Hmm? I was in I remember hearing about it on TV. Oh yeah. I knew I had relatives here. Um, and I'm, it's right down in Grant Park. Uh, but, you know, I don't think there's going to be any violence erupting. I really don't. And if, because, um, the police department, they're going to put a lot more undercover police in place. They're going to be a lot more, it's just going to be a lot more security. It's going to be really tight security. Um, you know, it's almost reminiscent of when Obama um, had his win and he, you know, lived in Chicago and um, it was in Grant Park, not one episode of violence, nothing. Right. So, I mean, there'll be a few hiccups, but the security what, is going to be amazingly tight. What I keep on getting from my guides right now is the word they're saying, it'll be controlled. Okay. Be controlled. That's what, okay, good. In other words, it's, it, yeah, there'll be sections where there may be, but it's going to be in a controlled environment. We know Obama's going to be here and Michelle, so good. Yay. All righty. Go uh -huh. ahead. <laughs> Raza West. What is the status of Ronnie Jackson, the former White House doc who lied for 45? Rolling Stone article about him running a pill mill in White House. He's such an angry person and currently a congressman from Texas. That's all it said. Well, no I don't know if he's going to get indicted for passing out pills. It's hard to say. Passing out pills at the White House. Um. But I think there'll be an investigation. But they're going to go after him from other for other naughty stuff he's done, mm -hmm. and at some point I see him out of office as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, that well, at some point they're all going to be out of office. But I mean, elected out of office, and his political career is. Good. I feel they'll take away his medical license. They will actually. I when you said that, I'm hearing yes, they will. Mm -hmm. Oh, poor man. If there were any other doctor, they would have done it already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jan B, 8922. Aloha, Melon Arthur. Question. Will Orban be used as a mule to deliver documents, messages to Vlad since he will have diplomatic immunity and won't be scared? If so, what is he giving him to deliver? Thank you. Won't be searched. <laughs> won't be scared. Won't be searched. Oh, uh, thank you. No, I think he's just meeting it with Donald Trump and Mar-a-Lago, which to me is completely irregular. It shouldn't happen. Um, and Donald Trump doesn't have access to any current security stuff because his security status has been revoked. Mm -hmm. And so I think basically what they're talking about is Trump, if I'm elected, I'll support you. I'm going to be president for life. I'll help you and yours. And that's what they're talking about. They're plotting. Well, it's that whole thing like, you know, the government has its foreign policy. Trump has his own. Right. To stay and, in there. <laughs> and you, you did hear about Elon Musk. The the second, they're talking about having a um, congressional hearing about what he did with turning off the satellites over Ukraine. My guide showed me when that happened that they're going to come after him like white on rice for that. He, I don't know if it's illegal, but he's going to face some big legal issues because of it. Yeah. So I, feel so too. I think Trump is, is probably trying to figure out how, or Orban is, is trying to figure out how he and Trump can build an alliance and also with Putin and not make it look as if that's what they're doing. 
Right. And if anyone wants to see what Trump's going to do to the country, look what Orban did to his. Got rid of the free press, jailed his, you know, people he didn't like, no free speech. It's nuts over there. Well, you know, I've been to Hungary and Budapest is a wonderful city. Mm -hmm. But at some point, the Hungarian people, you know, he's like a Putin, but at some point, Hungary is much smaller. Uh, I don't think they're part of the, I don't know if they're part of the European Union. I think they are. I don't know. But at some point, I think uh, the Hungarian people are, are going to stand up against Orban the same way the Russian people will stand up against Putin. Yes. Because Navalny's murder, and that's exactly what it was, will be the spark that ignites a powder keg to get rid of Putin and dictators like Orban. Right. That's what I see. Mary Rosart, Trump becomes the nominee. Does he then begin to get the intelligence briefings? I hope it's up to Biden and he refuses. He's not going to get them. He's not going to get them. Just like Trump refused to give uh, the intelligence stuff to Biden. Well, guess what? I, he's not going to get them. No. Mm. They might feed him full of misinformation. Good. <laughs> yeah. um, Crazy shark. Do you see cryptocurrency crashing this year or continuing to reach all time highs? Well, the problem with cryptocurrency is it's not regulated. And certain countries like North Korea bought up a bunch of it and that caused the prices to rise and they dumped it back in the market, which caused it to crash. So it's all time highs and it's doing really well, but I see it crashing again. Like you said, it's not regulated. And uh, I don't know if it's this year or next, but it will crash again. Yeah. I wouldn't put my money there. <laughs> no, I'd rather put money in a Broadway show. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, that, that I like. <laughs> a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got some here with you, too. Um, right. <laughs> Pixie Dust. In 2024, the Supreme Court will be hearing the Chevron defense case. This president precedent has been in place for 40 years. The Clean Air Act is one regulatory agency I can see corporations targeting. Here is the link describing what is at stake. Do you see it being overturned? Thank you. No, I don't. Well, if this Supreme Court overturns it at some point, the Clean Air Act will be upheld again. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, whether or not Trump becomes president certainly concerns me. My feeling is he won't. It concerns me. And, you know, these world leaders who play on people's xenophobia and blame other groups for all their problems, but like Hitler did, you know, that's what Trump does. That's what Putin does. That's what uh, Orban does. That concerns me. But that pendulum will swing back, mm -hmm. coming back more toward acceptance and things like that. And there's going to be an end to a lot of these world dictators, especially in democratic countries or would be dictators. But what concerns me the most of anything is climate change. Yes, you know, you guys had those, what do they call them? Uh, some kind of atmospheric rivers. atmospheric rivers. Here in Chicago, in February, it was 74 degrees. I have lived here since 1983, and I cannot remember in any of those years when it was 70 degrees for two or three or four days in February. It just is unheard of. I also have a friend in Kansas, and she said, I have to go get my lawnmowers fixed because the grass is starting to grow. Everything's blooming in the end of February and March, and it's, that's unheard of. It used but then to, she said it snowed. When, right. I mean, when I moved here, you know, in 1983, it would snow in October, November, and we wouldn't see the ground again until spring. I thought I moved to Siberia. And I can see how, how it's accelerated within the past four or five years. You know, my friend Rosaire Hall sent me an article that, you know, when it's warm like this, the trees are starting to bud, the plants are mm -hmm. starting to bloom, the geese are coming back, um, and insects are coming out. 
Well, the problem is if it, it's going to freeze again and if we get snow, all that's going to die off and it's going to kill off a lot of insects and it's going to be harmful to the birds. Exactly. So it's like, it's crazy. I just, it that that scares me more. I think we really have to do something. So that's a really good question, Pixie Dust. Um, you know, here again, we all need to vote. We all need to speak up and say, we need to nurture our mother earth and we are tired. Uh, we got to do something with this runaway climate change. You know, Al Gore warned of it, warned mm -hmm. us up. And, you know, I mean, he's been talking about it for years and everybody just kind of ignored it. But now look, it's here upon us. Well, it's kind of like also um, Jimmy Carter. When he was in the White House, he put up solar panels. Right. Right. And then the minute he's out, they took him down. Well, it becomes, you know, full circle yeah. because I remember when I was a kid in high school, you know, in the, well, in the late 60s, early 70s, there was, you know, Earth Day, the whole Earth movement, the whole mm -hmm. idea about, you know, stop pollution from automobiles and the greenhouse effect. This is nothing new. I mean, this is, people have been talking about this for 60 years. And, here we are. <laughs> well, the first time I moved to Los Angeles was 84. And you would see the electric cars. Right. Like right. And then all of a sudden, they were all taken away. Right. And now we're going back to electric cars. Here well, we I don't think they're going to go away again because I see tremendous changes in battery tech. No, they're not going to go away, but it was it was basically because of the auto manufacturers and the, the, um, right. the corporate you know, oil corporations, all that kind of stuff that that killed the Saturn electric car. Right. And I think also the celebrities were driving them. Right. And you couldn't buy them, you had to rent them. I think there's also gonna be uh hydrogen cars running off hydrogen. The only byproduct of that is water. So you know, Pixie Dust, if if they uh rule in favor of the oil companies or whatever that's about, um at some point, we'll have the Clean Air Act again and a lot of laws that'll help us to stop this runaway climate change because we're one of the worst polluters of everybody, believe it or not. Mm. Well, oh. I just keep on getting an IHOP, the, the logo in my head, so that if it does go for the oil company, IHOP, flip pancakes. Everything's going to flip back. <laughs> All righty. Daughter of the Black Madonna. Ooh. Ooh, that was like the Lady of Chestahova in Pennsylvania. Yeah, Black. Lady of Chestahova. Yeah. Hello, Mel and Arthur. Love you both. Thank you. Will anything ever be done about a Fox News and how they enable to spreading of lies and misinformation, creating division in our country? Not much has changed. Well, I'm saying there's going to be a lot more lawsuits filed against them for <clears throat> misinformation with huge sums of money. And those people that are with big corporations that are filing those lawsuits and individuals against that so-called news network, which is really op-ed, really. It's not news. Um, and propaganda arm for we know say propaganda right. you got that but i see them winning these lawsuits and so that's going to really <clears throat> put a hitch in their giddy up in other words <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna you know i see at some point they're gonna have so much financial trouble because of all the litigation against them that i see them bought uh for a very low price and they'll slowly very slowly come back to guess what news thank you and back to being more middle of the road and being honest the other thing i see coming back is remember when if you if if a political candidate was on and let's say they ran a commercial for a republican then you'd also have yeah. to run one yeah. for a democrat or an opposite or uh, for yeah. the you know a, a, an opposing party and they did away with that, I think, back in the Reagan years. I see that coming back. 
Well, then they had sm- they had cigarette commercials. So, right. Yeah, go figure. But, what, but if but, but will Rupert Murdoch be able to go on his new honeymoon? He just got engaged again. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to go to YouTube. Jay. No, I didn't realize how ugly he was till she stopped off the wall. It was a play I once liked. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we. Here we uh baby blue did Victor Orban give Trump money in exchange for national and I ran out of print here. Secrets. <laughs> we already talked about that. Got it. In exchange for national secrets. Um Trump might be talking to him about getting money maybe from a Hungarian bank, but if that happens, <clears throat> here again. Yeah. You know, Trump's got audit- auditors watching all that stuff. So the judge, the the old the the retired judge, he right. can't write it, he can't sign a check without her seeing it. Right. So Rose Blue. Hi, y'all from Texas. <laughs> Good accent. Will Burrow lose plea deal since he perjured himself? Yes, yes, and yes. What he said. I don't know which way I'm pointing, but what he said. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, or, as, or as my Mandarin friends would say, she, she. <laughs> Um, Tess M8925, what will be the most significant thing that happens around this solar eclipse? It will get dark for three minutes. I don't see much happening. Well, the way I, I'm just going to say what I keep on picking up is it's we're in this we're going to the darkness, and I love the fact that it's over Texas. And as soon as the uh, sun comes out, you know I don't want to think I'm Annie singing a song, but the uh, sun will come out, and I actually feel that this is going to. It's going to act like a full moon, but on steroids, and just things are going to start being seen. I say this metaphor. Yeah, that's what I'm talking but about. Like the darkness comes, that would represent Trump and all the darkness, and then all of a sudden the light comes, and when as soon you know things, is it ever going to come back? And it does. Um, um, that's all. I see that metaphor. Of yeah, it. that's what I'm talking about. And that's basically what I'm saying. But also, if I was, you know, hiding when he wrote about, and then there was light, he had a big major C chord. So I see a big major C chord happening. You know, Gary and I went to the last one. I think we were in, it was, I forget. We were at the Walter Cronkite Center, whatever that's at. And it was raining. We got our goggles and it was raining and it was like overcast. And it was like, oh. um. So I still have those pictures of Trump staring at the eclipse, though. Oh, I remember that without, without glasses. I know. Oh, no. how stupid! Oh, it didn't hurt me, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of fried his brain. Uh, anyway, we were so disappointed because, and it was like, here it comes, here it comes, and it was weird that. You know, all of a sudden, it was just like this accelerated dusk. And it mm. got dark. All the lights came on. But if you looked in the background, you could see, like, light on the horizon. But it was this almost, like, opaque darkness. It's not like on a real dark night, but it was mm. opaque. But it was weird. And I think it lasted for about a minute or two or three. And then all of a sudden, it started getting light again. We didn't see the sun eclipsing because the clouds were covering it. But yet we we experienced it getting dark and it was really i've never been in a total eclipse like that is it was amazing we're going to go down to carbondale to see it this time really Uh, and i said gary we're going to have an alternate plan because if it rains uh uh-uh we're going to go somewhere else because we ain't (laughs) we always eclipse whenever i hear about eclipse i always think when i was a little kid watching bing crosby in uh what was it uh connecticut yankee in King Arthur's Court, yeah. Where, where the, there's the eclipse. <laughs> there you go. We got time for one more. Okay, let's make it a good one. Uh, will we ever get rid of the Russian interference in American politics thanks to Donald Trump? Well, Putin thinks he's going to influence this election. 
But you know, once Trump is gone, it's going to come forward about how much influence that Putin and the Russians did have in the 2016 election and a lot of the underhanded stuff that took place. I see the Mueller report coming front and center again. Oh, oh, oh. speaking of all that, one more thing. Did you hear that Trump has to pay a fine in the UK when he sued Christopher Steele? No, how much? Uh, I think it was like 385 thousand i wish it had been a million but still the, it, but it's well, then, he's gonna about how the, then he's going to go on about how the british are corrupt and you know that he doesn't like you know look what they're doing to me and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. and then you know he'll cause international hardship with britain and whatever um we walk, already walked in front of the queen but i do see us tightening security here tightening mm -hmm. media stuff like that so that, you know, other countries won't have that sort of influence. You know, in France, what they do three days before an election, they have a complete media blackout about the election because this way it keeps people from bringing emails to the light or things like that. They do it like three days before. I think that's a good idea. I think here they just closed bars for the day. There you go. But it wouldn't work here because we have a free press and we want to keep it free. But Trump yeah. would like it to be more of a his propaganda arm so yeah gee only fox is working on my tv today <laughs> i'm that happy no <laughs> <laughs> i won't be here next week because um i will be in st croix we're leaving on sunday so oh, i'll be able to do the show next week but when i get back then we'll do it and um i'll talk to you your birthday is march 24th i'm march 22nd and we will talk between you know when i yeah. get back when are you getting back we will get back on monday the 18th okay so we will do a show on tuesday the 19th 20th. that's okay yeah. and, and i'll be on your channel then or whatever okay. yeah. so I could... well it is what it is you know sometimes i'll copy and put it up there anyway so it's well, all good you know it's, it's all... like a thumbnail they ask you questions they ask me questions you know I mean, it's our Aloha Tuesdays. So there you go. On Friday. Why no? But we'll get back to Aloha Tuesday on Tuesday. And just make sure you eat fish today. Oh, wrong era. Never mind. I did, actually. <laughs> All right. I just... Have a great, wonderful trip, Ralph. Thank you. Oh, do we still have an opening for Africa? No, it's sold. That's right. Um, you know, somebody, um, I've got to tell her, she gets, excuse me. <laughs> She goes, you're so excited you're belching get the free reading from, from our fish I ate for dinner it's jumping up um <clears throat> that was funny um you know i had somebody still have the rhine there, right i'm sorry you still have the rhine yes i have so five. how do people get a hold of you for that for the rhine they call my office at 847-590-5411 or go to my website www.meldor m e l d o e r r so what happened was I had somebody that wanted to go to Africa and then she said she couldn't afford it. And I had two or three people interested. Oh, I don't know. Rah, rah, rah. And then um, somebody that had inquired about the Rhine in Africa about six or seven months ago, out of the, I had two people inquire day before yesterday or yesterday, in fact. And um, one said that they get back to me a little bit later. I'm like, can't hold it. First come, first serve. So the lady called and she said that, you know, she didn't know, but she really wants to go. And I said, you got to let me know because I've only got to March 19th. I can't hold it anymore. And she's going. So I'm going to call her and tell her that she gets a free half hour session from none other than Arthur. Yeah. And everybody, Absolutely. please get a reading from Arthur. His readings are incredible. They're really, really good. And visit his YouTube channel. If you want to get... If you want to um, have a session from Arthur, how do they get a hold of you? Well, you can go to my website, which is www.arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R. Is it lose or ease? No, it's ease. Arthur, ease, <laughs> E-A-S-E, your, Y-O-U-R, mind, M-I-N-D, dot com. ArthurEasyMind.com. 
You can reach me at 310. I have to look up. 494-5955. Or all this information is also on my YouTube channel, which is Arthur Ease Your Mind. And go to his YouTube channel, thumbs up and subscribe. Thumbs up, subscribe. And you can just tell me I hit 22,000 subscribers. And so um, when I get back from St. Croix, I will announce the three free half hour sessions that go to my subscribers. But to my members, I'm giving away three autographed copies of Linda Grindle's new book. So please. Wow. So, uh, yay. And um, there you go. Oh, good. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's, I read it in the night. It's brilliant. And you all write a good review, please. And also, I'm going to give away um, three vials or bottles of Deanne. Deanne. Uh, uh, Shemaine Tarot. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Senior moments. Uh, they have wonderful oils. And it's funny, she gave me one. She gave me three vials. One was abundance. And I put them on every morning, you know, my little ritual. Boy, when I did that, Africa sold like that. <laughs> so Great. So anyway, um, so you all go to Deanne's channel and order some of those oils because they're incredible. So there you go. Info I can't to him too when he comes back. He's good. If it wasn't for this man, I wouldn't be here. Well, my Who parents. Is that? Who's there? But... Who? Mel. Mel. Do I know him? Well, I tell everybody I'm. Well, I'll be sixty-seven years old, reinventing myself on YouTube. Who knew? Mel. Do I know him? He's my imaginary friend, him and Harvey. <laughs> Have fun. I heard that Mel can be a real jerk. I heard a B word. Uh, <laughs> beneficial to know. Oh, thank you. That's nice. All right. On that happy note. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay. Everybody be safe. Be well. No, do it like right. Do it right. There you go. Thank you. All, All right. right. <laughs> bye bye. Be well.